David Lee Rock. Yeah! Yeah! Was. Okay, we'll be back yeah. later on with more. <laughs> stay there, stay there. Um, I heard that you get up at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, you know, we're not, you gotta have a balance here. You gotta have a balance. Sometimes we get up at four o'clock in the morning and sometimes we go to sleep at four o'clock in the morning. Nice balance. Yeah. Oh, a lot of people, you know, we're not members of the Keith Richards Hall of Fame, so to speak. Right. You know, so there's <laughs> people who take care of ourselves, but at the same time, I don't know what kind of poem I'm gonna get out of a glass of iced tea. I can dig it. Listen, yeah. um, you were almost caught trying to get into the emperor, I believe, uh, <laughs> in Japan. Nah, the uh, the imperial wall, the imperial palace. We're going to do some climbing. That's what you're referring to. Yes, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah. We're going to do some climbing here in, outside of Melbourne, actually. Yes? Yeah. Well, we don't have any really big... we got the Yu-Yangs down yeah. the road, but yeah. <laughs> we're going to climb the Dandenong Mountains or something. It's not really big. You're going to do some generally in... Uh, oh, sure, in a place called Arapiles, which is like three, four hours from what I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah, we crawl ahead and find some local people, you know, from the sports stores. and Climbers. Yeah, and we're yeah. taking 12 of the crew up there. My parents always said I belonged on the end of a rope. So. Did they say you've been fulfilling their wishes ever since? Well, not do, intentionally. Do you, is, that, is that your release? Do you get away from the pop thing and, the, and that's your being alone on a Yeah, mountain? that keeps me honest. You know, that's a, it's a, something that you do where all the music goes away and you don't get limo leg, I call it, you know, when <laughs> they <laughs> slam the door. This, is, uh, this right. is the longest molly. Oh, careful. <laughs> <shut myself. laughs> Oh, careful, you'll uh, blow it. This is Dickie Nick. G'day, how are you, Mr. Roth? Yes, down I think you better take one on yeah. one. Uh, one on one, come that, on, sick Is that Dickie Nick? Right, g'day, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, Listen, yeah. This is the longest Mr. Meldrum's been on, hasn't said a word. It's amazing. <laughs> Oh, we just thought we'd roll it off with a yeah. few... This guy hides Western. under the yeah. desk. He's an agent. I've got a friend. I've got, <laughs> got a friend. Every time we turn on the front porch, he come, front porch light, he comes around. We call him David Lee Moth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. I, you've probably heard that before. You haven't heard that one before? Well, He's got a million variations of, of it. Yeah. Uh, could we see your uh, climbing exploits take you to the big one one day? I don't know. I, I mean Everest. Oh, I thought you meant Jackie Love. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean climbing in a rocky sand. Oh, she's yeah. very tall. Though, and too. I thought, but not 29,000 feet. No. And that's where I thought maybe one day you'll, you'll explain. Oh, I don't know. My enthusiasm goes way beyond my abilities on this. Climbing for me is, uh, is symbolic of what showbiz is. It's either straight up or straight down. Half yes. the time you can just have yes. to hold on. One door opens, another one slams in your face. We know the feeling. Yeah. David. But uh, speaking of show business, the man beside you is a uh, is the pop guru in this country. <laughs> Fair well now. He is well, a we God have, yes, but do you know David? Uh, <laughs> so I'll hand you over to Molly. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, David, um, welcome to the country. Uh, so many times promised before, especially with Van Halen, you'd come over and finally here. Um, what sort of show can we expect? Big extravagance? Well, like, I think like you, can, you can expect more than America, because this is like the first time. This is like marriage. This is a grand opening, you know. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if somebody would catch that. <laughs> we could have thrown it away, actually. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we play a longer show. We play more music, you know, and a lot more of what goes on on stage here. You know, we put in a good, geez, this is probably 150. 50th show and I think we're getting it right. Right. Now, um, during the time with Van Halen you had fun. You have a, seem to have a lot more fun with your film clips that you do uh, since you went solo. Um, do you write the storyboards? Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> I, le I learned how to write storyboards back in, yeah. what, 78, 79 when I was learning from a pal of mine who did McDonald's commercials. I said, Bobby, what's the trick to this? He says, well, when the snow starts to fall, I draw palm trees into the storyboards. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. Next thing I know, I'm shooting in Hawaii, he says. You do the casting <laughs> for the girls? In oh the... yes, we do. We do the color correct. <laughs> <laughs> do you find that exhausting, oh, that part work. of the business? It is very exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. Can, we, can we watch? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, Dickie, no, you certainly can't watch. No. Congratulations on Skyscraper. Thank you, you must be very happy with this album. Here it is here, folks. Um, now, is that really you climbing there? I mean, that's I know. Real, that's really us, dude. That really is. Live in front of your naked, steaming eyes. Hey, it's nothing. It's nothing that costs so much money. In fact, the people that I climb with live out of the backs of their station wagons. And it's something that, you know, you don't just pop up to 2,300 feet. You know, you got to start off like anything else. Take a little run, and next thing you know, you're playing Aussie Rules football. Well, now, listen, in this country... <laughs> Yeah. In this country you also at the up. moment is performing as Mick Jagger and I know Mick gets um, uh, cheesed off about the fact that uh, people keep bringing up about the stones and all of that. I mean, do you get the same with Van Halen? No, not at all. No? Yes. Oh, well, you know, it's... <laughs> well, on that note, I think... Well, <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to come back to that, but we're going to take a break. We'll a quick break and I'm back with David Lee Roth. Hey! It really is him, folks. I can see him. It is him. Welcome back. We have at the moment David Lee Roth, and he's talking to Molly on Molly's melodrama. Well, David, I had the great chance of seeing. Sorry, thank you, guys. Sorry. The floors no, again. Sorry. All right, but right. he's a god to his people. Now, listen, I, I, I had the great <laughs> chance to see you way back uh, at Madison Square Gardens in New York, uh, where you put on an astonishing concert there. You, um, in fact, at one stage there, stopped and talked to the audience for quite a while. Do you still do that? Bring the audience into, <laughs> into your act? Yeah, the idea is to play with the audience, not at the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks would design a show at the beginning of a long tour and just use exactly that to steamroll the audience you know and any time that you have more than five people in a room one of the beauties of you know pop entertainment or whatever number one is that the total IQ in that room will be less than the number of people that, <laughs> that gives you a sort of a freedom there yeah and how do you feel audience <laughs> No, it doesn't. Be. Now, listen. Um, but being such a strong fellow that you are, I assume you are. We've got a competition which we've kind of <laughs> we've, we've got a competition that's been running for about five weeks. It's the Kylie Minogue. I don't know if you've heard of Kylie Minogue in America. She's starting to become big there now. I think we heard her four or five times on the way in from the airport. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you mean to say? <laughs> Do you mean to say you've actually found a radio station that's playing the poor boy? <laughs> yeah. a breakthrough. All right, and it's also uh, the Bross competition. So if you'd like to come with me, or well, actually we could bring it in. Now, there's been an astonishing amount of entries to yeah. this competition. The technical name of the competition is I should be so lucky we shouldn't have started it in the first place. <laughs> and we've got heaps of... I couldn't find a barrel big enough, so we've had to get this big uh, cage in from a zoo. OK, well, what, what, is, what is the name of the contest exactly? What it's is called I should, I should be, be so, so lucky. lucky. When will I be uh, famous? I be famous? You should be so lucky. So lucky. Yes, and you, you should be. Will be combination so lucky. of Kylie Minogue and, uh, and Bros competition. And what do you win if you if you an overseas trip uh, to New York, with uh, you. to London? No, not with you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, I read what you get fifteen hundred dollars in each, each city, city or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, well, you're already half and famous. You're How Minogue. far you're going to get on fifteen hundred dollars? Yes, Australian currency. You're already being ripped off. What a wonderful man. Yeah, the Rolling Stone gets a hold. <laughs> All right, now listen, can you give it a bit of a whirl, David? Well, 1500 bucks is just for the accommodation. <laughs> there are... All your accommodation and... Is it fairs and travel arrangements to pay for? Oh, I, I know you'll find this hard to believe, but there are 120,000 letters in that, uh, in that barrel. 120,000. What about the poor suckers that are stuck under the mesh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. And we will give you a special uh, arrangement with my manager, no, uh, Bernie Shelley from Possessive Artists. Uh. <laughs> the, the, the bloody holes. <laughs> we'll now, we now try and find uh. an opening in the barrel. Same old problem, Molly. <laughs> an opening in the barrel. Oh, here we go. And here we, we are. got it now. <laughs> okay, we're going to reach in. Yeah, close your eyes. Oh. We got a drum roll. And the winner is. Yeah. I think you got my arm, Bob. <laughs> Hang on. Woo! And there goes his mountain climbing career. All right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, before we read out the winner of this, oh, I'm so uh, they of course had to answer uh, two questions. Uh, they had to answer three. Give us three tracks <laughs> on side one of Bross's album. <laughs> and here we go. Uh, when will I be famous? Yes. Never. Drop the boy? Yes. As often. And liar? <laughs> 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 <Liar>, yes. <laughs> All right, on the other side, Kylie Minogue, and it's... 
Turn it into love. Yes. My baby. And we also... Look, my baby. We have the last question, which was named the four laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> Actually, that's not quite correct. No, no. Uh, if it doesn't have, have look my baby or look my way. No, no, Only... look my way. She's got it here. Look, see. Look, look my, my way. way. Yes. And... Number three, has she got... No, she hasn't. Oh. It says love Christine, at first sight. Christine yeah. Nicholson. Hello. Well, no, don't read so it out. So she didn't win the it. thing. She didn't win the contest. No, love at first sight. She's got it right. She would has you like to she's read the right. winner? Yeah. Right. No, would you like to read the winner? <laughs> there you go. In a manner of speaking. All oh, right. Ladies and gentlemen, a big, warm round of Australian applause for Miss Christine Nicholson. <laughs> right. From, she's from Five Coventry Crest, Mill Park, 3082, Melbourne, Victoria. Terrific. Well, there you go. I tell you what, she's a very lucky lady. She's going to meet Bross. Go to a concert of Bross. Meet Kylie Minogue. She's going to make a rap cities. record. Here's the lovely. Yeah, she uh, says here she is three years old. <laughs> <laughs> three years old. I think it's one oh, of the younger ones. Can she take him, Mum? Yeah. Uh, three years. No, yeah. older than three. By the, I can tell by the writing. All right. It's about five. And they'll be staying in some of the better subways of New York and London. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can always busk. Um, so I'll hold on to this. Well, congratulations. And we'll get in contact with you this week. But congratulations and well done. Yes. I just want to ask David, and, are we uh, likely to see any big... Oh, that's the... Uh, the do you want to do the prize? Oh, the sponsor, Sorry. Daryl. Yes. Your prize. Yes, your, yes, your prize is courtesy of Skittles. Taste the rainbow of food Ooh. flavors. Back to you, Molly. Actually, I've tasted a few of those rainbows. They weren't um, tasted. I want, can we expect something like a giant surfboard or something coming Oh, down? yeah. Well, it's got to look like it sounds, you know, and sometimes that sound comes off the stage in great rolling waves, and what's a wave without something to surf it on? Right know, on. So. What about the boxing ring? Is that The boxing ring and all of it. You know, the show is, is as visual as it is musical. You yeah. put in a couple months just on the music, so, hey, let's have a little fun. I don't jump on the end of the bed while you're trying to make a living. So. Wait, this, that's right. Now, I think there's something in that for all of us. We should grab a hunk of it and throw it against the wall. Uh, you've been watching, unless you have other questions for David. No, we, not at all. We want to ask David if he could stay around for uh, a very, very important talent quest. That We have a talent quest where we run, some, uh, we, we run some people through and they do their act and we yeah. give them a mark out of ten. Is it the, the same to... people who cast the show? No, no. No, no, they're other victims. Uh, w would you like to hang around and... Uh, and this show is deep. This is, it's coming up... Virtually after the commercial break. Please. I think we could probably is. wait through a commercial break. God, yes, we'll do it. Oh, we'll make it. love it. You'll we'll love it. You'll meet some it, fascinating mate. people, especially Red, uh, who's coming over to uh, to help you. He's a yes. fellow judge. So, that's a little later on. But first of all, we've got to make some money. Yeah. Hey, that really is him. That is David Lee Roth, live in the studio. I don't believe it. A man who's seen a lot of talent in his time. He's even cast for it. David Lee Roth, on the end of the panel... Joined in the middle of the panel by Jane Wheedland. Yeah, Jane Wheedland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't get to chat to Jane before. Jane, are you enjoying the solo stuff? You oh, really... yeah. Having a great time. Yes? What wonderful flowers in your hat. Uh, Thank we... you. They're real. Are they really? Well, they're not. <laughs> Don't say you could because your hat would be stolen by Jackie McDonald on, <laughs> on this show. She are loves you, flowers. Are you going to Saturday night mess after the show or something? Uh, <laughs> Jackie, that's not nice. And on the end, of course, as always, red. All right. Uh, <laughs> He's a popular guy here, huh? <laughs> He's really popular, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> act one. Act one is called The Asphalt Arab. Uh, an attempt at humour. You get the Indians, huh? Yes, it's an attempt at humour coming up here, I think. The Asphalt Arab. Act one. <laughs> Good evening, drivers. Good evening. Just got out of night court and, uh, well, I thought it was night court. Uh, last offence was is uh, from Operation Meadow Luke. That's the one where we get out, give them heaps and give them plenty. Out we were protecting and serving, and I'll tell you what did we give them a serve. Here was Mick and I at our favourite revenue strip. When all of a sudden, over the crest he came. Nose down, tail up. Flared guards, fat wheels, pea plates flapping in the breeze. It's Bruce the Goose in the flying wedge. Mick says, this bludger's got to be doing 150 k's. I said, I reckon 145 will see him out, mate. All eyes on the cash box. 147, thank you, mother, for the chook. Steps out, wheels him over. Kiss the curb jerk. Uh, g'day, Bruce, I says. Uh, just look at your licence and your temporary licence and uh, 
What would your reason be for exceeding 60 in a build-up area, I says? Well, says Bruce, the pleading look in his face and a tear in his eye and a quiver in his voice. <laughs> it's me dad. Me dad's had a heart attack. I'm on my way to hospital. Mick said, what's his reason? I said, number 37. He said, oh, not 37 again. Jeez, intensive care must be flat stick. <laughs> now, right, Bruce, I says, hit the toe and don't forget to come to court, will you? Three months later, there we are in court. Bruce, he rolls up, he's got a haircut, he's got a shave, he's got a three-piece suit and a one-piece barrister. He's got a little bit of blue paper with 147 over 60 on it, looking about as confident as a one-legged man in a bum-kicking contest, so I get the whips box, and I give the oath, and I tell him who I am and where I'm from and what I saw. Well, says the beak to the barrister, any questions for this witness? Uh, yes, your worship, uh, now he says, senior. Tell me, was there any other conversation with my client prior to you so professionally detailing your observations to him? Uh, not that I can recall, I says, he said, let me refresh your memory. Senior, is it possible you've approached my client's vehicle in long rhythmic steps and singing out loud, I can feel a booking coming on. <laughs> and then when you got there, did you put that big highway patrol grin right through the driver's door window and say, congratulations, dummy, speed of the day. <laughs> Uh, just a, a light-hearted moment of humour, Your Worship, to put the victim, I mean, the defendant, at ease. No further questions. He says, now, uh, Your Worship, I feel it prudent to put Mr Goose in the witness box. He has some important things to tell, Your Worship. Now, Bruce, he says, face the front, tell His Worship in a big, loud voice why you need your driver's licence and what unbelievable hardship it's going to have on your life should you lose it for such a trivial offence as speeding. Well, says Bruce, with a pleading look in his face and a tear in his eye, a quiver in his voice. <laughs> as God is my witness! And the beak says, I won't make him take the oath. <laughs> Your worship, I'll take a lie detector. He said, I am a lie detector, son. Your worship, I need my license. How am I going to impress all the tarts down in Carlton and Danny Nong? I can't do burnouts on a skateboard. <laughs> and if I lose my license, I'll have to get out of bed ten minutes early and go to work on public transport. <laughs> Well, says his worship, who's 65 and used to walk 30 miles to school every day. Shame on me, Bruce, to think I was going to take your licence for 30 days, son. He said, Bruce, what's this? Bruce said, that's a pen, your worship. He said, no, it's not. It's a magic wand. Because I'm going to wave it over your licence. It's going to disappear. I'm going to turn you into a pedestrian for six months, take $500 of your hard-earned cash, you abracadabra. Would you like time to pay? Operation Meadow League again next year, senior. You ought to be congratulated. Oh, thank you, Worship. Thank you. Thank you. Did you, uh, that's Tony. Tony, go on. Did you put that together? No, I lived it. Did you? Should, should really say, because I don't want it to influence the scores. Here's the but, boys. But uh, Tony actually is a policeman. What, uh, which are we... That's enough of you to worry about, Red. <laughs> no, no, he's not. <laughs> Um, I guess you Is have read Tame Address already. You're right. Yeah, no way. Didn't really need driver's license. Well, I yeah. thought he was going to do an impersonation of a human being. Uh, now, uh, officer, don't worry, we can, we'll edit that out. Does he drive uh, to work? <laughs> Does he drive to work? Does he drive to work? Uh, yes. Uh, In fact, I know which road he's taking. <laughs> so do we. Uh, not no. anymore, officer. David, no. real one. Um, out of ten, what did you think? I mean, it wasn't hysterically funny, but uh, very clever and a lot, lot to remember there. Well, I, the most that I've ever had a police officer say to me directly was, out of the car. So, <laughs> with that in mind, and a definite leaning towards, as you say, I'd definitely have to give him, in honor of having to go back through customs, a number six. Right? <laughs> number a six. Six out of ten, that's quite good. You'd be pleased with that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Jane. I had a little under, uh, trouble understanding you. Sorry. Amazing. You um, told me the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I really liked your outfit, so I gave you a six. <laughs> it's a six. What a six. Dear. It's not, it's not a real gun. <laughs> and red? I never forget a face. <laughs> neither, neither does he, really. But in your case, I'll make an exception. Yeah. It's a five, the best score he's given for the last time. Really? Tony put it there. That's a total score of 17, which is a good score. Hey, wait over there. We'll take a break and we'll come back very shortly watching Red Faces, where we might discover some internationally famous and fantastic acts. But your guess is as good as mine.
And we shall be going back right into it any moment now. Oh, oh, I see. We're out of the break. Good. Now, Act 2 is just the four of us. How many in the act? Five. Great. Terrific. Just, yes, and just the four of us um, performing... Oh, yes, a lovely number. Got to get you into my life. <laughs> just... <laughs> Most unfortunate typographical error. This is a country act. <laughs> They're big in the city, too. They're really good. Now, try and remember this time, girls. Blow, OK? <laughs> From the top. <laughs> Beatles funeral. Apologise to Jane and uh, and David because they weren't aware that the, when the gong goes off. Hey, what really do you got off. against music? <laughs> that, that, was, no, that was that was delightful. Now, do you all get to the same school, or, and, and you're part of a bigger ensemble? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Which one of, is the spokesman of the? <laughs> They all said her. <laughs> That's a very good gag. Um, now, would you take Wilbur in with your group? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's not good enough, no? Oh, yeah, he's fine. Well, you know, he's just looking for extra work. <laughs> so, why don't we uh, hear what David has to think of this? Well, as a musician, as a professional musician, I realize probably as well as anybody that you have to be a seed before you can be a flower. And we Very all well put. applaud the effort there. On the other hand, Red was just complaining about how all the dance lessons were just not taking hold and uh, the information just wasn't getting in there. So here's a, here's a little straight showbiz for you girls. One a piece, I give it a four. It's a four. It's a four. What? Do you have a, an ambition to uh, to be in the business full time, or is it just a little it's just, just a little, a little hobby. side yes. hobby yes. type? Yes, and probably Jane? just as well. I don't know. I really liked him. I thought you guys were great. And Jane, could you uh, see a national tour of America with the four oh, yeah, girls definitely, behind you? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Do you do you blow anything? Do you do? Uh, <laughs> are you blow a reed instrument because you could form a love little fight. Only as a hobby. At least a hobby. Well, it's like I just thought if state. you um, if you had a piccolo or something. I've or... never been paid for it. <laughs> right. Well, therefore you're not you have not a card carrying. I have an attorney that you. I can't believe it. It's a nine. It's a nine. Lovely. That's a very good score. Just when you thought you may be going down lower, you came up to a nine. Now, let's get down to a two. Um, Red. Well, it is, it is difficult. I appreciate that you must have been terribly nervous. And it's the sort of experience that if in any way it went wrong, it could sort of completely put you off a show business career. And somebody's got to do it. <laughs> I, think that's, I hope I didn't lead him into that. It's a score of 15, girls. You are, in effect, you are only, uh, you are coming second. And you are only two points behind our, our leader. So uh, let's see what happens. If you'd like to take your stand. Tell that to and Ben Johnson. Over there. <laughs> and is it all good school? I didn't Which take one? no stereo. Vermont High. Vermont High. Vermont High. All the girls uh, from Vermont High, hello to all the Vermont High clan who are, may be watching or have gone out for the evening. Uh, act three is Brett Slay, pronounced Slee. I wish I'd read that first. <laughs> Brett Slee. <laughs> Terribly sorry. Uh, Brett, okay, right, you're coming on, you're ready. Hmm? Brett 
Bruce Lee, and uh, this is a Bill Collins review of Hey Hey It's Saturday, and I should just explain, Jane, uh, Dave, Bill Collins is a, it looks like this bloke behind here. A probation he, officer. He does, yes, he's a probation officer, uh, yeah, here we go. And here is Bill Slay, Slee. Brettsley. Brettsley. Hmm. <laughs> uh, always works, doesn't it? You know, many's the time I go and see a show and think, oh yes, I suppose that was good, but you know, it's just not Casablanca, is it? <laughs> but you know, hey, hey, it's Saturday is different. I tell you, within the first five minutes, it's gone right in here. <laughs> oh, it has. You know, I moved. Truly, I moved almost to the point of actual motion. <laughs> you know, October the 6th, 1971 was when it all began. You know, back then, a kiddie show with cartoons and the like, you know, won't last long, they said. May they eat their words. <laughs> I tell you, it was by no means a kiddie show. It's got all the comedy, all the thrills, all the excitement that any mature adult would wish for and more. Mmm, indeed, more. <laughs> it's got an ostrich, hasn't it? Oh, it has. Oswald Q. Ostrich. He's pink, daring, dashing, dare one say ravishing. Mmm. Yeah, there's Daryl. Marvellous, isn't he? <laughs> that broad from Brizzy. Oh, I cannot find the words. Oh. You know, there's Wilbur Wild, and indeed he is. There's nothing he enjoys more than a good long hard blow on the end of his instrument. <laughs> and Redmond. My word, he's bigger than Clark Gable, isn't he? So many years. So many memories, the good, the bad, the ugly, red. <laughs> no! Well, you almost got there. Did you have a really, uh, did you have a, a rip snorter of a tag for us at um, all? <laughs> I'll, I'll get that bit here. Get that bit, get that bit there. So I beg you all to indulge in this feast of entertainment. I'm finally able to present for you in full Technicolor. Oh, I know I will. Happy 17th birthday, hey, hey, it's Saturday, and a marvellous evening to you all. Now, that was, very, that was very like the bloke that he was doing trying to do almost there. Mm. Right. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's hear from, from David now for a score for uh, Brett Slee. Well, without knowing exactly who it is he was trying to do, I would have to say that he did him pretty well. <laughs> Reminds me of the old story of the two blind mice who run up against the blind snake out in the middle of the jungle and, they, and the snake says, what am I? I don't know what I am. I've been blind all my life. And the mice feel him and they ch check him out. They say, well, you're definitely blind. And they say, the other one says, yeah, and you're long and snaky. And the other one says, and you for sure don't have any years, you must be a critic. I gave it a 10. And there it is. It's a 10. It's a score of Whoa. 10. All our other acts have just fainted. Uh, Jane? I think this type of character must be a universal phenomenon because we have someone at home who is remarkably just like this young man. Oh, and Leonard Bolton? No, he can't spell phenomena either. Uh, Ronald, Rex Ronald Reed, Reagan. his name is. Rex Reed. Oh, Rex Reed, right. I thought it was great. I gave him a seven. A seven? This is your... Now, this is your big moment, Bill. Red. One day you'll go too far and hopefully you'll stay there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a four. For a score of 21, you've just pipped the policeman. And I have the envelope here. Thank you. I have the envelope here with $500 for you, which is pretty good for coming on and doing that sort of stuff. Mm. Do, you do, do you get to do it often? No, oh, not, not often enough. No. Right. <laughs> 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 All right, and um, act, uh, act one, act one. Tony, uh, Tony Gunter is, uh, has won the 250, Tony. I'm going to get you to try to a break in a minute, but uh, there you are, Tony. A round of applause. He came second. Well done, Tony. Thank you. Yeah, but he's a cop.
And where are the girls? The girls have come through in third place. Not bad, eh? So, uh, that's a hundred dollars for you, and uh, and say hello to all the kids at uh, Vermont High. Uh, well, first of all, we have to thank uh, first of all David. Thank you for coming well, in. Thank you very much for having me. Enjoy, enjoy your uh, your first tour of Australia, <laughs> and also Jane. I hope you're enjoying yourself while you're here. Love it. Well, we, are you, you going to go back soon? Can you stay for a while and grow some more flowers for your hat? <laughs> Want to come up and practice your hobby up in the booth? No, no. <laughs> Jane, lovely to have you in. I'm and representing Jane now. Later on. <laughs> yeah. And of course, on the end, red as always. Now, Bill. Um, would you just like to throw to a break now? That's all you have to do.